Okay, well, I'll call to order the October 2021 meeting of the Homewood Planning Commission. Um, we've been off for a couple of months, so pardon our rust or my rust in conducting this meeting, but uh, Fred, if we could start off by calling roll. All right. Mr. Roberts. Here. Mr. Cronteras. Here. Ms. Andrus. Here. Mr. Broadhead. Here. Mr. Armstead. Here. Mr. Respento. Here. Mr. Harwell. Ms. Wilcott. Here. And Mr. Wilson. Here. All right, thank you. Um, next item up is the uh, approval of the minutes from our July meeting. Did everyone have a chance to review uh, the, the very brief me uh, minutes from, from uh, that very brief meeting? Okay. I move to approve. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? I'm sorry, I missed two seconds at the vote. I'm sorry? Oh, I missed the vote. oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right, so those are approved. All right, moving along. Uh, communications from the chairperson and vice chairperson, Mr. Wilson, do you have any communications? Just, I'd just like to um, kind of recap the appreciation of, of the work everybody's put into the um, bylaws and rules, the tree ordinance, and including uh, personal uh, staff of uh, Mr. Roberts who helped uh, with retyping from uh, paper to electronic versions and uh, certainly the staff and members of the commission for uh, all the hours put in. Yeah, and I would certainly echo that. Um, a lot of work went into this and it's kind of fun to hopefully get this approved tonight and move on to bigger and better things. Um, I don't have any, besides that, I don't have any other communications. So. Uh, the first uh, item tonight of, of old business is BZA case, I'm sorry, <laughs> case RZ21-08-01 relating to uh, 3006 Cook Street. The applicant is Blackwater Development Company. Uh, I believe Mr. Abernathy is presenting tonight. Okay. And Mr. Abernathy, when you come up, if you could state your name and your address, please. Sure. John Abernathy, uh, residence is 303 Ascot Road, Homewood. But I'm here, as you said, for Blackwater, um, based in Vestavia. So I have a short presentation, try to keep it really brief, on Cook Street um, that I want to present. Doing this, you can see me. You can see yep. next slide. Okay. So the, um, again, you may be aware, but this is the property on Cook Street. And Cook Street's a dead end street. It dead ends right at, right behind this property. I'm doing this to show you kind of the varied uses in here. It's extremely varied in zoning, and even from zoning, the use that's actually in that zoning doesn't always mix. So the apartments to the north and the south, and then have office to the left and retail uses to the right. Next slide. Okay, so this is existing property. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's, it's definitely hidden back there, but uh, it's, it's not been different for a good while. It's an old house, vacant. Okay, this is a survey of that property. I assume these were three lots previously, but they have they front Cook Street back onto a 10-foot alley. Okay, so that's us, uh, zone C2 there with, um, again, C1 above us with a mixed-use office and residential apartments, and then R5 around us with residential apartments, and then parking lots and retail to the right. Okay. So we're requesting uh, a rezone to R7 to change the use of this property, and we're also going to be, which you may know, going to the BZA on Thursday to request a change, and I'll, um, to the setbacks as well. Next slide. So this is why. So our goal is to get the setback variant so that we can orient this property north-south versus um, towards Cook Street. And I'll explain why here in just one second, but this plan uh, shows the townhomes facing north towards Oxmoor. So they'll, uh, they'll be in view as you come down Oxmoor and then with uh, outside parking to the rear, um, two, two uh, spaces per unit, per code. Okay, so here, here's the reason why. So when you look at this property, if you look to the right, it's retail. We're looking at the back of buildings and we're looking at what's traditionally been dumpster and trash area that gets thrown there. 
It's also pretty overgrown. If you look to the rear of us, also trash cans, also the rear of apartments that have been there for a while. So we would like to obviously not have that as a residence view. Instead, we want to turn, turn north, and then we have office to the left and uh, north, and then we also have, which you've seen, the apartment building that's being redeveloped just north of us. Okay. I do want to address, um, and, and I'm about done here, I just want to address, I had gotten a few letters that had been sent in. Normally I wouldn't address them, but um, since I disagree with them, I thought I would at least address them. There were a couple sent in from uh, to, the, to the west and north of us for some office users, and the main complaint was traffic and parking. Now I know there's some existing parking shortage that's going on with them, and I feel like they sort of banded together and put it back on me as the guy coming in, second to them. But as you see in orange, that's Cook Street, and that's where we're accessing. And in fact, one of the letters says they're not opposed to the development as long as I connect to Cook Street. And so that's what we're doing. We have no connection to the alley. So in blue is the alley that runs from Firefighter and from Oxmoor. And again, our plan doesn't propose connecting to that or paving the alley. So I could more see the objection you know, if we were coming down those alleys beside their uses, but instead we are accessing only off Cook Street. Um, and I think they just felt like it wasn't appropriate, but again, even the staff report that I saw, you know, said the rezoning is suitable in, in uh, the staff's mind. It would not affect adjacent uses. And if we developed it under the current use, they felt like it could be a burden to Cook Street. So we feel like our proposal to change this to a less intensive residential use um, is appropriate. So just a couple of slides. I know there's always a question. We don't have developed um, elevations yet. We haven't gotten through this process, but I have two slides for you just to give you some thought. We're looking at either like a craftsman low country style is what we would be looking for. So here's some examples of craftsmen that you would see with different elements and the right sort of a mixture, which is where we would probably, the right bottom, which is where we would go. One more slide. Brian. And then this is kind of the low country where you add a, a metal type situation in. So that's the look of what we have in our mind of doing on these um, townhomes. So that's all I've got for you today, but I'm available for questions. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Abernathy. This is a public hearing. If anyone here uh, wants to come speak on this case, this will be the time to do it. If you would give your name and address as well. Please. Yes, uh, my name is Brock Tompkins. Uh, my uh, address is 702 Belmont Road, Homewood. And then I also own the adjo adjoining property that uh, Mr. Abernathy referred to as uh, 3009 Firefighter Lane, which is on the western side of the property in question. And um, if, if can we pull the slides back up? I'd just like to point out a couple of things that Mr. Uh, the, specifically the site plan. Uh, Mr. Abernathy referred to the zoning. He meets the zoning requirements at two parking spaces per unit, but it's going to be three bedroom rentals and there's only going to be two parking spots per unit. And a concern for me, Dr. Friday, who I know sent a letter in and the other properties adjacent to it that I talked to is we're going to have potentially six cars plus visitors with no parking on that property. Yeah. So those parking spots are going to come from my property, which is the R5C1 zone use. That's me. Dr. Friday's is just to the north. And then the property <coughs> to the northwest. And there's a sidewalk that's coming down into the alley that isn't there that just walks, invites people to come in to use our property, which is uh, for our title and closing firm. And there's no, there's no conditions there. Uh, for that, I don't even think it's, uh, I don't even think the setbacks fit that, and I know that's another meeting. But those are the, those are the main conditions that we have, is how it's going to be used, the density with which those uh, units are going to be put there, and where the people that are going to rent in those buildings are going to park. Because then we're going to be not good neighbors, having parking battles that we don't need to have, because we don't have parking issues now with our neighbors. We all work together and we get along fine. And this is just going to compound an issue that we all deal with. So those are my concerns for the committee. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to add, answer them. May I get right. your name one more time? Yeah, uh, Brock Tompkins. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Anyone else from the public before we uh, close this, this portion? Uh, do, Billy Wade and we are the um, adjoining property at 1903 Oxmoor Road. Um, and what, what is your residential address? I'm sorry. My residential address, my primary home or yes, the property? Yes. Your, your primary home. 1426 Manhattan Street. Okay. It's right there behind Trinity. Okay. So basically, I, I exactly what Brock was talking about, the overflow of traffic. Uh, my current home I live in my primary home is on an alley and I fight traffic all the time with guests driving through from the church traffic. So as if we have an adjoining property at this resident, we're, we're already fighting to have enough parking for the businesses that are occupying our building. And if we have full occupancy of these proposed townhouses, we will run out of space. And it looks like if they have to cut the alley in, based off of one of those photos I looked at, where it has the, let's see, let's try another slide. That one right there, all right, go back. The one in the, the, le the photo in the left, looking back at Firefighter Lane at Brock's property, those two parking spots right there, that's probably, you know, I don't, of course I don't do surveys, but that's pretty close in line to where they're gonna have to cut through that alley. So I think he's actually gonna be limited and already lose a parking spot in addition to what we're already on limited parking. So anyway, I didn't prepare anything to say today, but that's what I've got. All right, appreciate it, thank right, you. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? Okay, we'll close the public portion and open up um, to the, to the commission for questions. Mr. Abernathy, if you wouldn't mind coming back up, please. And not to jump ahead of everyone else, but you, you just heard some concerns expressed yeah. about uh, parking and, and maybe access to what right. you're describing uh, for guests who you know, might not have a space to, to park in those apartments, might be right. parking next door. What, what do, you, do you have a response to that? I think we are, unless, if unless I'm wrong, we're parking two code, which is two per unit, which is what we provided. And um, I heard someone say three bedroom, but I never said that. Um, we've not decided that. In fact, we're building some townhomes on 18th, and they're all two bedroom and one one bedroom. So we didn't have not gotten there to say we were going to build the three bedroom units. So, and then I heard something about cutting through an alley, but again, I've come up here and said that our plan shows no access to the alley. So, and, and by, by no access, meaning that the, obviously it'd be a driveway where the, where the parking will be yeah. on the south side of the building. It won't tie it all into the alley to the, to the west? No, there's no proposal to do that. And if that's a you know, really big deal, we can make sure we solidify that in any way. We, we'd have to pave the alley to access there, and there's no plan to do that today we did show a sidewalk but it, candidly we didn't really think about it very much and I've heard opposition we're fine to show no sidewalk going to that location we're fine discouraging it in any way that you would want us to do that offense I mean we're, our goal is not to throw traffic on anyone else we're as much as I heard there's no parking issues it's obvious to me that there is some parking concern going on there so we're going to sustain and only work within our property and have the amount of parking that we need. Okay, um, and not to monopolize this, <laughs> yeah. uh, while I'm while I'm speaking, you'd mentioned early in your presentation that you were going to um, request a variance for yeah. the property yeah. because you were going to orient it uh, right. to where it's facing north. Um, and I haven't measured this, but it looks like to me, just based on the shape of the property and the size of the property, if you built the apartments in the same size and dimensions that are in, in the description that you would probably need a variant. Would you need a variance if you oriented them going where they're uh, Yeah, we would be still facing? be asking, we'd be asking for side variances. But again, we would be um, looking at something that was pretty unattractive and just we'd have to think really hard. When you're looking at dumpsters on both sides, trash, people stacking stuff, they stack stuff by those dumpsters all the time. It's, it's discouraging to build your 
you know, to spend money to build to look at that. But we, if we were to do that to your question, yes, we would have to have side setbacks. So when you turn, we're asking for the setbacks on a public street and a public alley is where we're asking them. And if you noticed on the plan, I know it's not up, but we have what would normally be the setbacks for the front and rear, we have north and south. You know, it's like 40 something feet at the rear and over 20 feet, over 25 feet in the front. So we have what it would have been the other way. We're just wanting to orient it north. Anyone I have else? a question. Yeah. Um, well, with that being said, uh, you're asking to cut those setbacks down to three feet. We are. That's a lot. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, if theoretically you didn't get the setbacks, would you still be willing to build something with less units? Or is six the magic number? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of to downzone, I guess I say downzone, I don't know if that's really a word, but to move it from commercial to residential, we would. So if the BZA turns us down, then we will probably not proceed. Okay, Yeah. thank you. I, I, don't, I can't say that for sure, but probably. That's, I mean, it's a probably not. question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd add to that. Um, I think just to go along with what Gianni was saying, the the word that has jumped out to me, and, I, and I'm a big fan of your project that yeah. you're doing on 18th Street, um, is the density. That yeah. so Brock used the word density, and and I I would love to see this at R5. I mean I love the down zone. I love you know as Vicky stated to us, you know this is not a viable commercial pro you know uh, yeah. property, um, but I would love to see it at R5 instead of R7. Is that a possibility? It. It may be, but I think we looked at it, and I'm not sure we meet the the R5. I mean, it does, I will look I to mean, somebody that knows, to but I don't think we meet it, or either if you did it, you could only have like one unit or two units. It wasn't like the uh, units to the north that are contained, they probably are R5 type of use on a C1 zoning. Um, three units. It was the way it was written. It didn't, because of the size of the parcel, it didn't let you do much. I mean, I would love to see you do three townhomes there. You know, it'd be less dense, and I think your neighbors would like it more, and, the, you know, wouldn't be as concerned about the parking. I, I know I'm not here to figure yeah. out the money game, but, you know, the numbers. But yeah. I, I think that the word that strikes me is density, and, and even seeing the pictures. And, you know, we had a similar situation on Firefighter at the corner of Firefighter and um, Huntington with um, a, a proposed property there that went all the way out to the setbacks, and um, and uh, the, it just it was too dense for that, for that piece right. of property. It just was. But I love the idea of taking, you know, that commercial and going to residential. I just do in general. For us, we, yeah. we would need something dense to take it from commercial just from a again I know that's not part of the consideration the economics but it sure. just doesn't really work for us and again we're trying to be self-contained on that parcel we're parking on that parcel we're only using Cook Street we're and Cook Street ends right there so people kind of forget this property is even there no one even knows it's there half the time so you know we're trying to be self-contained there I know it feels dense but it would be you know, on its own there, and not not on firefighter, not on a main road. Most people won't even know it's there, even after we build it. Are all, all our units are going to be the one or two bedrooms? I don't know. That's what I say. We haven't done that. We did that on the other. Um, I don't know that we have the square footage to do three bedrooms. That's pretty big, but we we would. I, I would say if we go like low country or some of that kind of style, those do make themselves up for bunk beds or interesting things that so you can According do. to the design that you submitted, uh, it has nothing to do about the uh, number of rooms or? No, we have not, we haven't designed, so we have not said we're gonna do, you know, X. Uh, no, okay. we have not said that yet. We haven't gotten that far. One of the issues that came up and when we, and Jennifer, Ms. Andrus mentioned the, uh, the proposed development on firefighter Huntington one of the things we had a room full of people right. mostly residents who lived kind of on the on the south yeah. side of that uh, who were, were very afraid who already had plenty of issues with water running down there with um, flooding especially mm -hmm. just right off of Huntington yeah and this it seems to me based on the, the property as I've observed it most of it right now is you know is grass or trees you know it's 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 uh, not impervious other, other than the house itself that's there it's not right. impervious but it, it looks to me like you would be adding a lot of 
uh, concrete or asphalt plus the buildings there obviously have you looked at what I know you haven't planned this out yeah. beyond kind of the footprint yeah. of what you would like to do but have you looked at what sort of impact it might have from a water uh, from a water standpoint from a you know because yeah. it isn't on hunting but it's on the side of the same hill yeah I guess I would say I don't know if they can pull that back up to the site plan or to the survey if you don't mind right there um, I know you I know you can't see but right here in the bottom right corner in the bottom left corner there's two large storm inlets and that there's a large pipe that runs through there so there's more than adequate storm drainage just right there the problem is that it goes down to Lancaster mr. Smith can tell you I mean we we that's one of our emergency we're using ARPA funds to fix because right. the the drain is not the same size it, it goes into a too small of a drain Go ahead, yeah, Kale. yeah and we would work we would work with your engineer yeah. and figure out pre to post flow rates and all the engineering stuff so yeah. we would we would take over at the point where these yeah. guys are ready to move their plans forward with engineering and um, we would make sure that his stormwater plans met the requirements of our stormwater ordinance and yeah we, d we do have some green area obviously in front and back and the property to ease the retail is basically a hundred percent impervious so all that water's running this way but uh, for uh, those that objected, I know that there was a lot of concern about the alley. Um, to, I guess, their uh, commitment to I guess, not having access from from the alley side <coughs> yeah. does that change anything with regard to how you feel about that? Or is um, I know I'd have asking you a question while Mr. Abernathy's up here, but you want me to come up there and talk? Uh, yeah, sure. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, and the answer is uh, the answer is because you're putting high density units in there. They're going to be rentals, whether they're two or three, and there's only parking for those. And then they're going to come into essentially my parking lot. Even if they don't, put, even if they put a fence up and they put bushes up, they're going to park in my parking lot. And then I have a second floor deck that you can walk up to, and there's not a lot of space for those people to do anything. So the concern is they're going to be hanging out in my parking lot and then they're going to be up on my deck and I'm assuming a liability for that. So there's really no scenario whether you put a fence up, whether you don't put, use the alley, the people are going to come out the front door and only have left or right to go. I'm on the left and Cook Street's on the right. And that is, that is there's no getting around that. That's, that and that's my big concern. So we're, we're looking at two things and I know Thursday is to go from what, what would be viable three to six and six has to be viable for it to be work, to work for John six just compounds the problem because it's three it's twice as much parking as is would be allowed that we're, we're going to take into consideration when this for this project and that's that's a whole lot of cars when there's already three or four businesses in that area and we all work together to accommodate each other with parking and everything like that and when you throw another six or eight cars in there every day where are they going to go how are we going to conduct our business there's nowhere for them to go there's just not that many we all had to work together recently to put a dumpster in and take out one parking spot of dr friday's so we could all have a dumpster on the site and, and work with trash collection that way so okay. i mean that was I appreciate that mr Tom, because yeah. i know we had already closed up no, 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 we, we asked you to come up and, and yeah, answer okay. but um thank you Mr. Abernathy, you come back up, please, if anybody else on the commission has questions. Just for clarification, sure. there, will, there will or will not be any garages underneath the townhomes? Or they're going currently, to park the outside? plan is not to have no any. I can't, I can't say that we wouldn't later, uh -huh. but the current plan is no, no, no garages. It would be okay. outside parking. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, and before I ask for a motion to vote on this, I, I'm sure this has been explained to you. We are, at least with respect to zoning issues and, and advisory yep. board, we make a recommendation one way or the other to the city council, and they vote they vote from scratch from there. So understood. Uh, I, I assume you understood that. But yep. Uh, if there are no further questions. I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve R721-08-01. You got that. Fred. Yes, okay. I do. All right. All right. Mr. Cronteras. No. 
Mr. Broadhead? Yes. Ms. Andrus? No. Mr. Wilson? No. Mr. Armstead? No. Mr. Respento? No. Ms. Wilcott? No. And Mr. Roberts? No. So um, this will go to the City Council, I think, with a 7-1 uh, adverse recommendation. Our next case is RS 21-10-01, uh, pertains to 126 Barber Court. The applicant is Derek Meadows. Uh, Derek Meadows with Gonzalez Strength and Associates, located at 1550 Woods of River Chase Drive in Hoover. Uh, we are representing Dean Dairy Ice Cream who's the owner of this property. Uh, we're requesting to resurvey one lot, it's 21 acres into two lots. And basically they have a, do you have anything on the screen there that shows these lots? We have this in our materials. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So, so if you can see there, there's two lots, 1A and 1B, they have a potential buyer for lot 1A. They will retain the property at 1B. Um, and, and this property today, it operates as kind of two separate entities, really. One, uh, uh, they make uh, milk. The other is ice cream. The, the, the side that is, they make milk will be the side that's being sold. It will continue to operate as a beverage uh, facility, just be a different type of beverage. Okay, um, this is a public meeting. Uh, if anyone has any comments on this case, this would be the time to come forward. Okay, there being none, um, we'll close the public portion of the meeting and Mr. Meadows, if you could answer any questions, stay up here if you would and answer any questions uh, the commission members have. I'll ask the question if, is this based on a proposed sale or, or proposed, you know, if the sale doesn't go through, you know, now right. you One, If right. the plat's approved, right. the, the proposed lot 1A will be sold okay. and they will retain lot 1B. Okay, and okay, so got it. Okay. One, 1B will still operate as the ice cream. Mm -hmm. 1A will, it will still be a beverage op operation, but be a different beverage. Do you know yet the potential buyer or what use would be on I, that property? I, I don't know the potential buyer, but I know the, I think the use, it, it, it will be swapped from milk to tea. Well, oh, the, the new, the, the lot that would be sold will be developed to sell tea or the retention, the it, re it, it, lot retained will convert from milk to ice. There's tea. not a plan to really develop it. It'll, it'll, they'll, basically use the facility as it is just swapping it from milk to tea for, for the for the lot to be sold that's okay. correct okay, yeah I'm sorry. The, so yes, the new sir. the new yeah. buyer yeah uh, okay. produces tea the old buyer milk so or the, old, the, the the current owner produces milk I'm sorry Yeah, so it, like I said, it kind of operates as two different facilities really today. So that's kind of the dividing point. Uh, there's a drive really that splits it right there. There's a guard shack there, and that's kind of why we're jogging to get around that guard shack, to meet setbacks, that kind of thing. And, and as you said earlier, just for the benefit of the commission, uh, no new entrances or anything. Uh, no, there's there's no plan for any new entrances. Uh, the, there obviously will be some upgrades to the facility itself, in interior, uh, mm -hmm. probably some upgrades to the actual building. Uh, I know there's plans to, to to do things internally, but not externally to tie into roads or anything like right. that. Okay. Yeah. One A or one B has been retained. 1B will be retained. It will oh, operate, yeah. continue to operate as it is. 1A will be sold. Okay. 
There, there's no plan ever to stop making ice cream, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Okay. <laughs> I think that was what Fred was getting to a minute ago. Yeah, in that case, I vote no. Thumbs down. <laughs> Okay, I'll, if uh, there are no more questions, I would entertain a motion. Move to approve. I'll second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I missed the. Uh, Ms. Andrus with the motion, Mr. Respinto, I believe, with the second. Uh, all right, thank you. All right. Mr. Cronteras? Yes. Mr. Broadhead? Yes. Ms. Andrus? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Mr. Armstead? Yes. Mr. Respento? Yes. Ms. Wilcott? Yes. And Mr. Roberts? Yes. Um, your case passes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our, our last um, case for tonight is another resurvey uh, pertaining to 1001 and 1003 uh, Oak Grove Road is case number RS21. 10-02, applicant is Ray Wygand, or Wygand, Wygand. Wygand, okay, I was right the first time, thank you. No, no problem, All right, no Mr. Mr. Wygand, if you could tell us about your case. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm Ray Wygand, 169 Oxmoor Road. Um, have two homeowners wanting to just move a property line between the two of them, and you know, one of them, I think, is moving, getting ready to sell his house. Um, so, anyway. Be happy to answer whatever I can for you. Uh, but before we um, have any questions, uh, there's no one here physically in the audience, but I'm going to open up the public portion of this meeting uh, and ask anyone to come forward if they have any questions or want to discuss this case. There being none, we'll close the public portion of this meeting. Um, and uh, if there are any questions from the commission members, I had one, you mentioned that one of the property owners um, was looking to sell. Was that, in the, in the description we have, lot one is the is the property that would be seeding or giving up the, the strip and a little bit more, uh, and lot two is the uh, is the other lot that would be gaining the new strip. Which one is looking to be, or is gonna be sold? Lot one. Okay. And I understand that the purpose, at least of the um, kind of the narrow strip running down the side of the property was to, to gain access for lot two to uh, Oak Grove Road. Is that correct? Correct. There, there is an existing driveway that's been in use for years. Um, <clears throat> we found some documents that created an easement for that, but it's not legal by Homewood standards. They have to have actual road frontage, and so that's what we're doing with the flag. Yeah, it might be, it might even be a conscriptive easement by now, but yeah, this is probably the cleanest way to do it. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. Yeah, I moved to approve uh, case number RS2110-02. Second. Mr. Wilson, second. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson. Armstead, yes. <laughs> well, doing well tonight. <laughs> okay. All, all right. All right, Mr. Cronteras. Yes. Mr. Broadhead. Yes. Ms. Andrus. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Armstead. Yes. Mr. Respento. Yes. Ms. Wilcutt. And Mr. Roberts. Yes. Uh, your case passes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the um, revised tree ordinance. I think, as everybody knows, you know, we had the the ordinance for a while at this commission level. Um, it made some revisions, sent it on to uh, the city council earlier this year, um, and. It was around that time uh, that the city hired a new engineer and a new arborist. Uh, and so there were some additional changes that were made uh, based on th their recommendations that the city council wanted us to review. And uh, Kale, if you want to come up and present to us the, the changes that have been made since we were 
uh, last presented with us. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, when I came to work for the city of Homewood in uh, April of 2021, the tree ordinance was about to, to be voted on by the city council. And at about the same time, there was also an arborist, a new arborist that was put under contract with the city. And so the, the, the mayor and the city council and um, myself and the arborist decided that we wanted to take a, a look at the tree ordinance to make sure that it was something that was approachable by the residents in Homewood and um, to make sure that it was something that um, was a little bit more enforceable than what we, what we currently had. So um, the new ordinance lays out the administration of the ordinance from the arborist position, so he needed to be comfortable with it also. Um, some of the revisions that we made, and I don't, I, I don't want to talk about the revisions that were from a, like since April and then what left you guys the last time, but some of the bigger revisions of where we are from the current ordinance um, was that a qualifying tree in the proposed ordinance is now going to be six inches and it's currently 14 inches. So what that means is currently if you have a tree in your backyard that is 10 inches, it currently doesn't qualify and it will in this ordinance. Um, so it, in the proposed ordinance, we will qualify more trees. Um, the roles and responsibility of the arborist are, are defined and kind of laid out in this proposed ordinance. We removed exemptions, so unless you're a utility or the city of Homewood who wants to take down a tree in the right of way, um, you have to comply with this ordinance. So that includes the downtown district and the Edgewood Urban Renewal Districts and all the other districts within the city. Um, we cleaned up the minimum tree density calculation in this proposed ordinance to make it a little bit easier to read. And then just general formatting, numbering, um, we deleted reference to the BEZ department to make it more reflective of who we actually are upstairs um, to sort of put the ordinance in line with, with the way the departments are structured. Um, and that's it, we've, we've slowly upstairs been maneuvering um, to the, learning our new roles as me city engineer and the arborist Bram is learning and we're kind of getting a process in place to be ready for this whenever it, it actually happens. I know it's been going on for a long time. I don't think anybody um, thinks that this is perfect by any means or, and it's certainly not gonna make everyone happy but I think it's a lot better than what we currently have. Um, it's a lot cleaner, a lot easier to read um, and it's approachable. You don't have to be a landscape architect or a city planner to figure out what you need to do in your yard when you want to cut down a tree. Um, so that's it. Are, are there any questions? Uh, th I'm sure there'll be questions. I, I do want to tell you, just having looked at this document for, seems like half of a decade. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it, it, is, it has been that long. It is much easier to read. It is much better laid out than it was when we started hammering at it a long time ago. So I do appreciate all the work that I know you guys did, and I know the, the, the council was involved in that as well. So um, I think we have a, a much better product than we had back earlier this year, even. Um, so thank you. Uh, no, no questions from me, but. I will, I didn't mention this. This tr proposed tree ordinance will live in the zoning ordinance where it's currently a standalone ordinance. So all variances would be heard by the BZA instead of the city council. Okay, I guess we need a motion for this, don't we? Motion to approve the revised tree ordinance. Second. <clears throat> All right, do we need to do that by just affirmation or do you do a roll call for this front? Either way, I think it's, it has to support a commission. We can okay. do it by acclamation. We'll, we'll just do it, yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, it passes unanimously. Yay, thank you all very much for sending that back to council. We appreciate it. Okay, um, moving along to less exciting things. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, we met the, the, the bylaws and rules of procedure subcommittee, ad hoc committee, uh, met last Wednesday to go over uh, the, uh, the proposed changes that have been made over the course, I guess, of the last 
year, maybe more, more than that, uh, to our existing uh, 2011 bylaws and rules of procedure. Uh, we met, talked about that, um, and have now presented the commission with an updated version, both in red line format and in clean format with all those changes uh, documented. And as of a few minutes ago, we have um, some replacement pages, and I don't have those in front of me, uh, actually they're right here, that would correct some of, some of the, uh, I think some of the section numbering, both in the table of contents uh, and in Article 4, which relates to officers and employees. Uh, we've obviously discussed this at, at length at this point, and um, I'd like to put it to a vote. Again, is this something we need to move, or can I just ask ask for a vote? Yeah. Well, uh, again, I, I'm, I'm, unless there's some level of uh, concern or opposition, I would think it could be approved by acclamation. Okay. All in a motion. Be before I do that, does anyone else have any, any questions or anything else yeah. we need to any, discuss? Any concerns? So All right. Should I say that again? I said before I asked for a vote, um, I was going to ask if anyone else had any concerns, questions, anything else to well, discuss. The question that I have is we should be given uh, two or three days to review the changes in a new document before we vote tonight. Okay, so the only changes in the new document. Well, it doesn't matter, but you know, if we're given a brand new document, we should be given the opportunity to review it and then vote for it. Okay. So I, we. we well, earlier this evening, we were given a red line version. Really, it just eliminated one section and, re and reordered the paragraph numbers. Um, what was given out tonight is, is basically a typewritten version of some of the handwritten changes that were in uh, the version that, that, that Vicki um, distributed earlier. So. Well, I understand that, but I don't see the urgency of doing it tonight. You know, if the whole document is being retyped, I mean, that's my opinion. Okay, that's that's. Um, I think that's appropriate. If you could yeah, call I'll the roll. Yeah. Uh, so I'll we'll make a motion it. to uh, pass the revised bylaws and rules of the Planning Commission as read and presented to us with revisions uh, from the subcommittee and staff last week. I'll second that. Well, well, Mr. Credit, we're, we're voting whether to approve these rules. These rules can be changed by, you know, by majority vote any month we want to. And, and uh, if, if someone has a proposed change they want to, to make, so we, we can take tonight, that up. If we approve them tonight, then someone finds some changes, we can re-vote again next month? I mean, ostensibly. Or, or during the month, or I mean, how, how does that go? Well, we would vote on this. Any vote on this would be done at a publicly noticed meeting, like the one we have tonight. Um, if and, and I think we've had an opportunity, ample opportunity, to review the changes that have been proposed. If if something um, in these rules, if approved, if something in these rules uh, created a concern that was worthy of, of revising again, we can take that up the, whenever that is, whether that's next month or in 10 years. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Wilcott. Yes. Mr. Respento. Yes. Mr. Armstead. Yes. Mr. Broadhead. Yes. Ms. Andres. Yes. Mr. Cronteras. Yes. And Mr. Roberts. Yes. Okay, those are approved. I have um, a, an original clean copy with signature lines for everyone. Uh, before we leave, if we could have everyone sign this, and then we'll hold, hold on to this uh, for dear life. And uh, <laughs> so whenever they want to change the rules in 10 years, they'll know uh, who came up with these, with these bonehead rules. So um, if there's nothing further, I think we could, uh, we could adjourn then. I'll, the election of officers. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, with the recommendation from the nominating committee is that the incumbent chair and vice chair continue serving their current roles. Is there, um, 
Any other nominations from the floor? No, I would second. I don't know if that's a motion, but I second oh, it if it is. Well, yeah. anyway, there, there could be a the recommendation and then. Okay. Yeah, if there were a motion, having announced what the recommendations were, if there's a motion and second to accept the recommendations of the nominating committee, so. So my there. motion would be to re retain Stuart Roberts as chair and Brady Wilson as vice chair. Uh, uh, so I would second that. I would second that. Hello. Okay. And then by acclamation, then. Okay. It is approved as recommended. Okay. So all yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, all in favor of uh, aye. 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 all opposed. And, uh, and thank you, Fred, for reminding me. Um, it's just on paper in front of me, but um, I guess I was so excited about the bylaws and rules of procedure, I, I blew right through it. <laughs> well, that's, that's okay. You don't say how you can decide it over, <laughs> over the bylaws. <laughs> okay, well, I would, um, I would uh, move to adjourn the meeting. All in favor?